so we are going to discuss about uh, the lecture asthma this is the explanation of this lecture and so remember asthma is a obstructive pulmonary disease remember this obstructive pulmonary disease is reversible this is reversible whereas other obstructive pulmonary diseases are irreversible and asthma is a chronic inflammatory disease it is affects the bronchus which affects the bronchus so which affects the bronchus so just we explain the histology we have drawn the histology of the bronchus and the bronchus is lined by ciliated ciliated pseudo stratified columnar epithelium ciliated pseudo stratified columnar epithelium and in between the ciliated pseudo stratified columnar epithelium we have a special cells called dendritic cells and below the uh, this all the epithelium sits on the basement membrane below the basement membrane we have lamina propria which has loose connective tissue and small tiny blood vessels below that lamina propria we have muscularis the muscularis made up of smooth muscle cells then below that we have submucosal glands this secrete the mucus and the mucus coats the uh, lumen of the bronchus okay now in asthma what happens is we have the, the bronchial epithelium are drawn in a magnified way so this is the ciliated pseudo ciliated pseudo strat, stratified columnar epithelium and this is the dendritic cell this is the dendritic cell and this dendritic cell is otherwise called as antigen presenting cell so this cell normally present in between the ciliated pseudo stratified columnar epithelium so what this cell does is if any pollen or any antigen enters the bronchus this cell takes this and they process the antigen and they present outside okay so they are presenting the antigen to the other cell so it is called antigen presenting cell so it is called antigen presenting cell so we generally call it as apc so actually they are dendritic cell so whom they go and present is there is a special group of cell called th2 lymphocyte so what is this they are t lymphocyte of helper type subset 2 okay so there are th1 cells also okay so there are th2 lymphocyte and what they do is they have a special receptor so this dendritic cell present this antigen to this receptor then this th2 cell gets activated they release they release two chemical substances one is il4 other one is il5 so this all happens in lamina propria il4 and il five il4 and il5 il4 and il5 and this il4 go and stimulate the b lymphocyte and this b lymphocyte 
produce IgE antibody, immunoglobin E antibody. Okay, immunoglobin E antibody, and they also coated with IgE. They also coated with this is IgE. They also coated with IgE. Okay, so sometimes the antigen can also sit directly here. Okay, that inshallah in the immunology we will discuss more. And this IgE antibody go to a special cell. Okay, this cell. is called mast cell this is called mast cell they have receptor for IgE then the IgE sits on the mast cell and they have multiple receptors for IgE and the IgE sits on those receptor and if two IgE communicates immediately the signal passes inside this mast cell has lot of granules this mast cell has lot of granules inside these granules degranulate which means the granules comes out okay these granules comes out so these granules produce certain effects because this granules contains this granules contains histamine and proteases some enzymes and they also contain some chemical substance that attracts the inflammatory cells that is called chemo attractants chemo attractants okay so these are the granules released then immediately this connection this connection which is happening because of more IgE and that sits on the mast cell this connection that activates the phospholipase A to which degrades the phospholipids of the mast cell which degrades the phospholipids of the mast cell and they form arachidonic acid then arachidonic acid is again broken down by a enzyme called <coughs> lipoxygenase and they form prostaglandin and as well as leukoterins okay now these chemical substances are formed so what are the chemical substances are formed histamine proteus chemoattractants and prostaglandins and leukoterins so these chemical substances do three things the histamine go to the blood vessel and they dilate they dilate the blood vessel and more fluid comes out the more fluid comes out now more fluid comes out and then this protease will damage the connective tissues and this chemo attractants will again go to the blood vessels and they bring inflammatory cells they bring inflammatory cells like neutrophil 
macrophages and all the inflammatory cells comes out these are the neutrophils all the inflammatory cells comes out because of the chemoattractants okay now this prostaglandin and leukoterins also does the same thing extra they do they go to the they go to the smooth muscle cells and they cause contraction what they cause they cause contraction otherwise they call the spasm so when they contract they produce bronchoconstriction what is the effect they produce bronco constriction they produce bronco constriction okay so this all the things happens and remember the th2 cell they release another substance called interleukin 13 interleukin 13 that can directly stimulate the glands to secrete they can directly stimulate the glands they can directly stimulate the glands to secrete more mucus and the more mucus comes here to the lumen to secrete more mucus now more mucus comes to the lumen okay so they secrete more mucus directly because of the il 13 okay now because of this reaction what are things happening in the lamina propria see now the antigen presenting cell is presenting the antigen to the th2 subset of lymphocyte t lymphocyte then il4 and il il4 and il5 and il13 are released this il4 goes to the b lymphocyte and they produce more ige then the ige sits on the receptor of the ige which is present in the mast cell they immediately they go for degranulation immediately they go for degranulation they release histamine protease chemoattractants and they also stimulate the membrane and they form arachidonic acid then lipooxygenase enzyme go and destroy the arachidonic acid and they form prostaglandin and leukoterins then the prostaglandin and leukoterins uh, go to the smooth muscle cells and they produce bronchoconstriction then the histamine goes to the blood vessel the histamine goes to the blood vessel and they produce dilation that will produce lot of fluid coming out and then the chemoattraction brings all the inflammatory cells so this all the whole thing is happening now lamina propria is loaded with fluid and inflammatory cells and there is ma there is bronchoconstriction as well as the glands are stimulated by il13 directly and they are producing lot of mucus and they are producing lot of mucus in the lumen this is what happens so this is happening immediately so it is called immediate phase reaction so immediate phase reaction acute reaction happens in asthma is due to the il4 and il13 that il4 produce more ige then uh, ige acts on the mast cell immediately the mast cell release the stored granules release the stored granules so that's why the effect is very immediate after the granules are uh, over then the effect goes down after period of time there is another effect comes same kind of effect comes after period of time because of il5 because of il5 this il5 attracts eosinophil il5 attracts eosinophil so now we got eosinophils coming out now we got eosinophils coming out this eosinophil release their granules and they produce same kind of effect okay so this is due to new eosinophils coming out due to il5 and then this il5 also 
make them to synthesize new proteins il5 make them to synthesize new granules il5 make them to synthesize new granules so to synthesize the granule and to be released it takes time so so that's why this effect comes late this effect comes late and remember these chemical substances stimulate the all the chemical substances which is increased in the lamina propria which can stimulate the epithelial cells which can stimulate the epithelial cells epithelial cells are stimulated this epithelial cells are stimulated and this epithelial cells release a special substance called eotoxin this eotoxin again goes to the blood vessel and bring lot of eosinophil and they bring lot of eosinophil so in the end in the second phase reaction we get lot of eosinophil and new granules are synthesized and by the mast cell and they produce the late effect okay so these are the things happens okay so here the obstruction is mainly due to bronco constriction the obstruction is mainly due to bronco constriction remember this bronco constriction is not permanent after the granules reduce the bronco constriction is relieved so they come to normal they come to normal or if you give a bronco dilator drugs bronco dilator drugs then then bronchus will comes to normal the bron if, if in the during bronco constriction if you give bronco dilator then the bronchus will comes to normal so it is a reversible constriction it is a reversible constriction this is what happens in the pathogenesis of asthma so this whole reaction in immunologically we call as type 1 hypersensitivity reaction we call as type 1 hypersensitivity reaction okay this whole reaction is called as type 1 hypersensitivity reaction so this is what happens in the asthma so then in the end what happens is let's see the end effect in the end what happens is now we have this is what lining of the bronchus lining of the bronchus i'm drawing it very fast so it has ciliated pseudo stratified columnar epithelium and this is the basement membrane basement membrane so now there is asthmatic reaction so what happened the blood vessels are dilated in the lamina propria the blood vessels are dilated in the lamina propria and they are sending all the fluid out and now because of this immune reaction we get lot of inflammatory cells we get lot of inflammatory cells these are the inflammatory cells and we get lot of eosinophils also we get lot of eosinophils okay and during this process there is some kind of increased collagen here okay and the you can see on and off construction of bronchial smooth muscles when there is construction the muscles move one another go one above the other and you can see increased secretion hypertrophy and hyperphagia of the glands that causes more secretion here it causes more secretion here so this is what happens in asthma okay so this is the explanation for the asthma chapter let's go to the part